Okay, good morning everyone. So today is another beautiful sunny day in Cyprus and last night was also uh, crystal clear skies and uh, last night could be considered a bit of a success, I think. I haven't yet looked at the images but uh, from what I could see in the snapshots everything was coming out pretty clear. So last night was the first night I'd moved my telescope into the dome. Now my dome is in a temporary location so it's not fully set up yet. I don't have the automatic uh, rotation and I don't have the shutter controls uh, installed yet. Uh, it's only in a temporary location and uh, in fact let's just show you where it's going to go. So this is where she sat just now just at the edge of the driveway and it's going to be moved over into this area just down here. I'll be building a three and a half meter square deck uh, to sit it on. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, make sure that I had all the parts and uh, none of the panels were broken in transit uh, as I'd shipped this unit uh, direct from Canada over to Cyprus and uh, although the boxes were in pretty good shape uh, you just never know what damage has been done with everything moving around uh, in the shipment. So it's the uh, next dome, standard next dome 2.2 meter uh, size dome and I've also fitted it out with uh, the six accessory bays so I've got plenty of room uh, to move around inside whether I want to put a little table in there or temporarily store equipment or whatever it is and in the short term I've just got this power cable running up to the house uh, which I can unplug uh, when I'm not using uh, the scope so let's go and take a look inside so at the moment this is my new RASA 11 last night was the first uh, imaging uh, on a target, uh, I went for uh, the Orion Nebula. I'd never looked at it before, so I thought I'd just see what I could get with that. Uh, so it's the Rasa 11, the version 2 model, sitting on my Celestron CGX mount. And in the corner there, I uh, just put a little uh, outside garden table uh, with my laptop on it and on all the power cables and everything sitting underneath that mess. So on the, uh, the telescope itself, I've got my uh, 60 millimeter, uh, 200 meter, uh, 280 uh, millimeter focal length guide scope, and sitting next to it, I've got the 30 millimeter ZWO mini scope. One of the issues I had setting everything up was uh, the founder scope uh, that fits onto my Edge 11 does not fit onto the uh, Rasa. Uh, it clashes with the top dovetail bar. Uh, so I had to make up this uh, little finder scope using the, the mini scope and a 26mm eyepiece. And I've also got the dovetail, uh, sorry, I've also got the dew heater uh, for both the guide scope front lens and for the uh, dew heater shield uh, on the front of the rasa there, which is the same size as the one I use uh, on the Edge 11. The other thing I also fitted to this, the, the mount was the GPS module. Uh, this does save a lot of hassle in setting up. Uh, it immediately finds its location and it also gets its altitude and it also gives you the current time and it's all automatic with the CPWI uh, software. As soon as you turn on the mount everything is just sucked in there and it all gets automatically uh, set uh, in the equipment. Uh, other than that, the only other thing I've got, let me just swing the dome around. It's a bit cramped to go inside. So I've got the StarSense, uh, StarSense Auto Line Kit. So uh, I set this up uh, the first time I tried it. Uh, I had a lot of problems because I didn't use a finder scope and because there's so many stars visible and uh, I just couldn't work out where the hell I was looking. Uh, so that's why I decided to uh, use the uh, the finder scope there just to give me a better idea of what uh, rough area the, the scope's looking at. Uh, so that was uh, a lot better. Uh, last night I managed to polar align and uh, uh, star align uh, quite quickly and I did a couple of checks on there uh, just to make sure uh, everything came up uh, absolutely perfectly. And then I've just got uh, a little USB hub mounted onto the side of the scope as well and uh, that's got the uh, connection for the mount, the connection for the, the main camera which is an ASI 2600 MCP and also I've got the 120mm uh, ZWO uh, guide camera 
which is connected uh, into the uh, main camera uh, at the front of the RASA. So the RASA uh, is a 620 millimeter focal length, uh, f2.2, so it's just extremely fast and uh, just makes some from some great imaging. Uh, I noticed last night uh, while I was playing around uh, with uh, Orion that uh, over overexposing uh, the Orion core was very easy uh, and in the end I decided to take uh, six day uh, one minute uh, snapshots and uh, I also took uh, six day 25 second I think it was no 30 second uh, subs and I also took a handful of uh, five or ten seconds, I can't remember what they are, I haven't downloaded them off the laptop yet. So on the front of the, the RASA, as I say, let me just go inside. I've got to pop off the dew shield and you'll see in here we have the Z, uh, ZWO ASI 2600 uh, sitting with its 55mm back focus. Uh, using the uh, ring that comes with the the M48 ring that comes with the, uh, the RASA uh, that's here on the front and then we've got a 16 and a half millimeter spacer which is supplied with the camera and then I've got my ZWO uh, filter drawer uh, which makes it easy to drop in and out two inch uh, filters uh, and that all gives us the uh, 55 millimeters once you combine the 17 and a half millimeter uh, sensor depth uh, in the camera. So that is really about it. Next up is uh, to uh, download all the images. Uh, one other issue I did have uh, when I first set everything up was the, the mount. Uh, for whatever reasons, the, the clamps just didn't take a hold. And I found uh, as I was uh, messing around, they decided to, to slide uh, up into the uh, into the, the legs there. So uh, I had to make a slight adjustment there. And really, that is about it. So let's uh, I'm gonna let me go and download all the images, and we will uh, go up to the main computer and see what we've got. I'll catch you in a minute. All right, everyone, so I've uh, downloaded the data off the laptop and I've run it through uh, Deep Sky Stacker and uh, Fix Insight and GIM. Uh, very basic uh, post-processing done as my skills in these areas are still, let's just call it negligible. So anyway, uh, as you can see in this image here, this is what I was seeing in the snapshot of uh, APT and uh, I could see a 60 second exposure, uh, it was quite uh, saturated in the core. So I set up two plans, uh, one for 60 seconds and one for uh, 30 seconds and I took 60 subs at uh, both those uh, settings. The guiding was probably the best guiding I've seen uh, so far using the CGX mount. I managed to get a total of 0.45 pixels which is equate to a 1.25 arc second and I was using the multi-star guiding for the first time in the dev version of uh, PHD2 so that's 2.6.9 dev version 4 which you can just download off their website. So I was quite happy with the guiding there and after downloading the images I, I split up uh, into various sections here. So these were the sample frames I was taking uh, just at the start uh, to make sure everything was framed up. Uh, these are 60 second exposures and uh, you can see how overblown uh, the core is uh, in, the, in Orion's nebula there. And a couple of uh, looks like Starlink satellites or whatever passing through because there was a few uh, and a couple of the subs came through uh, on the same line. Okay, so that was the test shots. So I set off the plan running. I uh, took the 60 seconds subs, uh, 60 of them. And I ran them all through the Blink tool in uh, Fix and Sight. And then stopped it. Uh, stacked it in uh, Deep Sky Stacker. 
And when I was trying to poke around in uh, the images here, you can see how heavily saturated it was. So I wasn't really too bothered about using the 60 second stubs at the moment. So I concentrated more on the 30 second stubs. So if we look at the 30 seconds, the core is still blown, but it's not as, uh, not as bad uh, in the image there. So for, for a 30 second exposure, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, quite some clear definition uh, in the clouds and the dust of the nebula, uh, both in the core Orion and the Marians and over uh, in the Running Man. Okay, uh, so having taken those, as I say, I ran them through Deep Space Stacker, as uh, Deep Sky Stacker, pull them up into Pixinsight. So well, these are the ones uh, I got uh, for the 60 seconds, and as I say, I didn't bother with them uh, too much. Uh, unfortunately, when I was setting up, uh, sorry, this morning, I went back to take all the calibration frames and uh, I, I removed the camera before I'd taken the light frames. Uh, for some reason in my head, I just completely forgot about it. Uh, so I only managed to take 25 uh, dark frames of each 30 seconds and 60 seconds. I set the, the camera temperature back to the 9 degrees C, which I was running at last night. For some reason, I hadn't checked the camera properly. And uh, I did plan to take it down to sub-zero, uh, around about minus 5, minus 10. Uh, but I wasn't paying attention. Uh, it settled on uh, 9 degrees C, so nevertheless it's better than uh, the ambient, although at the moment it was quite chilly, it's around about 15 degrees, which is positively tropical in, uh, in Scotland at the moment, but never mind. Alright, so that was the 60 second subs, uh, then I took the 30 second subs, and you can see we've got some significant improvement. Uh, the one on the top left is just a straightforward out of DSS with a little bit of colour tweaking. And then I moved on across the top uh, with automatic background extraction and then uh, dynamic background extraction. And on the bottom, uh, a couple of more variants uh, of the same thing, just trying to uh, get a little bit more of the detail coming out uh, on the core there. And once I was happy with that, uh, and a bit more tweaking, this is sort of where I got to with Pixinsight. Uh, probably looking not too bad from, from my experience levels, but uh, I dare say many of you out there that have got this significantly more skills in uh, post-processing would probably think there's uh, huge holes in it, but uh, that's why we're here to learn and try. Uh, so anyway, I took this image, I exported it out of Pixinsight, and I took it into GIMP. Uh, just for a couple of final tweaks, and this is what I have ended up with uh, in Pixinsight. So overall, I would say for my skill level as it stands at the moment, I am very pleased with how that uh, has come out. Uh, I dare say in the future, uh, obviously sorting out the calibration frames, trying to merge some of the, the core from uh, lower exposure images, uh, or perhaps uh, run through some filtering. Uh, I didn't use any filters on this occasion. Uh, I did consider uh, running through the UHC filter uh, and maybe pulling in uh, the UVIR cut as well, but uh, I didn't uh, didn't want to try my luck too much uh, to start with. So anyway, that's where I got to with that. And uh, just as another play, uh, after I finished taking all the images from last night, I went back and had another, uh, sorry, this is the five second images that I also pulled out of uh, the camera. Uh, and you can see the core isn't as overblown uh, and the three stars right in the core. Uh, you're starting to see the outlines of them, so I could probably still do some messing around and uh, merging some of this data across into the, into the other image. So the other one I wanted to just touch on, I haven't done any post-processing on it, this was purely a test just to see how the guiding was behaving. So I went across to M101 and uh, I took a, a five minute sub, so this is unprocessed raw five minute sub uh, out of the camera and uh, you can see uh, it's not looking too bad there so I'll maybe try a clean up 
and then I also did a 10 minute sub and it's a little bit brighter but uh, I'm starting to get some stretch in the stars there so uh, we're still room for, for an improvement there on the guiding but for 10 minutes I wasn't expecting miracles in the, in the current setup. All right, so really that's about it for the time being. I'm quite happy with that image and uh, we'll see where things go next. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you have any comments, please leave them uh, down in the comment section. Uh, like and subscribe or if uh, you didn't like the image or there's uh, any other things you don't like, of course, uh, dislike button and uh, leave some feedback in the comments. So that's it for the time being. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.